Green fashion was a buzzword at the recent Oscars celebration. Several actresses were seen wearing a refashioned gown or an upcycled dress at the gala event. While very few of you watching my program will ever attend the Oscars, including me, we too can reclaim older fashions with upcycling techniques. Donna Fenske, a member of the Sewing with Nancy team and designer, is my guest to explain how to use trims and fabric pieces to refashion what's already in our closets. Welcome back, Donna. Thank you, Nancy. And we're going to focus on upcycling that begins with take two shirt. S start with a standard tailored blouse and it gets a second life with added trims, including zippers. It's an easy makeover that requires just an hour of time. Upcycled shirts. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman, is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Our first upcycled shirt takes about an hour to transform. And, and Donna, the details that you've added to this shirt are really quite interesting. Thank you. What we have is we just have a portion of a zipper that's trimming our neckline or our collar here. Like piping. So, like piping, mm -hmm. right. And then we also, I also picked out a very interesting trim for like the neckband and I just kind of have it uh, creating a little point there as well. And that's ribbon. Yes. And then um, I have a zipper that is going down the center front and it's actually a acting like a concealed placket because I did leave the buttons underneath. And also I was working with a zipper tape that was by the yard and I really enjoyed leaving the zipper pulls on as well as an added interest to the placket. It's very clever. Placket. And this transformation is quick and you can use a variety of trims as Donna has used or you could use just ribbon. The choice is yours and we're going to discuss the placket first of all. Right, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to measure the placket mm -hmm. and you're going to add an inch because you'll, you'll add for turning under maybe a half inch at the top or a half inch at the bottom. So start right below the collar band and then measure to the hem and add one inch. Correct. And um, also if you're using zipper tape, sometimes mm -hmm. putting a little trim at the starting and ending <laughs> point versus turning under is easier as well. I do like your idea of including or keeping several of the pull tabs. It gave a yeah, great yeah. illusion. So, very nice. so you could, instead of advancing them away from the length, you could just include them. That's a great option. So what, what I did was I cut also some little ribbon strips and I'm going to simply finish off the bottom of the bottom and top of my little zipper tape. And I'm just wrapping the trim around and create straight stitching mm -hmm. and then we're going to just pull that <laughs> trim over so that you have a stop but it's not bar tacking it's a pretty ribbon trim right right and then you simply um, attach it to your blouse and you're going to sew across the top and we'll I'll take this one out of the way Donna so across the top and then just on the ins toward the inside of the placket Here, right because what we're doing is we're creating the concealed placket by just stitching one side of the placket, zipper placket, so that when you're mm -hmm. stitching. Right, so across the top and then down the, the inside of it and then you can simply button your blouse. Very yes, easy. Yes, it's really fun and fast. Now if you may have some leftover zippers or just use the zipper as piping is a really a clever idea and double sided basting tape is your, going to be your friend for this one. Right, you can measure around your collar um, mm -hmm. as well to get the length and what we're doing is we're putting on a double sided sticky 
tape onto the under collar, kind of in the top stitching area mm -hmm. of the collar. And then we're going to turn under the edges like Nancy just accomplished. And just stick it under there. And stick it under. <laughs> and you position from the right side. Okay, so Donna has removed the protective covering. Right. And then you kind of miter that corner so you can place it the way you'd like it to so be. So you kind of creatively miter the corner. And just double check from the right side to see if you have a consistent distance of the zipper trim showing. And just continue um, taping mm -hmm. the zipper in place. And what's really nice is you don't have to mess around with pins. Because when you have a lot of pins in that area and you're turning corners, it's, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> you can get pulled. Yes. So here's a close-up of using a zipper foot to stitch along the edge of the collar. We like to use this zipper foot because if you have metal teeth in your zipper, for example, the foot would ride on this, on the teeth. So that way, use that zipper foot even though you're not putting it on the zipper in a conventional way. Next, what we have to mm -hmm. do is measure the collar band. And what we're doing is we're measuring kind of at the base of the collar band because usually that is a little bigger mm -hmm than the top edge where the collar is attached. And stand the tape measure on end. We're not measuring it really accurately, but you can see that if you stand it on end, you'll get an easier way to measure the, the length of that area. And then you've cut the ribbon, again, an inch, a little bit longer. Allowing for like little seam allowances at both ends. And I made it really simple by just um, folding right sides together and just sewing a little seam across the end of my trim and and it's, it's just stitched across the end but right. when you invert it when you invert <laughs> it it makes a really cute little point and I wasn't too concerned about covering the whole area of the mm -hmm. collar stand sure. and you just top stitch it there, there right another option if you didn't have zippers for trim uh, you can simply use ribbon. This this blouse is made in this technique with the ribbon on the inside. And my ribbon, when I made this, wasn't wide enough. So I centered the polka dots over another ribbon, and the ribbon was striped. It wasn't my favorite ribbon, but I never know the be the wiser. So I stitched this together, and that became my placket. I used ribbon for the trim. You can see it just top stitched into place. So the take two blouse can be made with lots of options, creative options, giving a blouse a second life. For those of you who are frequent flyers, a first class upgrade can really make your day. Frequently worn denim shirts can easily be upgraded for another positive uplift. Change the hemline, add trim, and alter the sleeve length for a first class style. I would imagine that you have a denim shirt somewhere in your closet and perhaps it hasn't been worn for a while and Donna, you have done an interesting makeover transition and upcycle to that shirt. What we have here is a denim shirt that we added an interesting zipper trim at the collar. Also we gave the illusion that we have a princess seam. And it's a slimming, it's a and nice seam. Right, right? and mm -hmm. it's a nice vertical uh, line that is slenderizing. Also, we have a whisket hem here. Um, again, another interesting uh, addition to the outfit. And also on the back, we continue to have the princess seams um, go the mm -hmm. full length of the body. Also, we have an addition of a little tab in the back that has, again, been trimmed with zipper trim. And actually, it's part of the cuff. So we're reusing a lot of the shirt and going to be putting it in different places. So one of the first things that you have to do is place the shirt on and then there's a pattern that comes with the book that accompanies today's program for the waistcoat style. You can trace this and kind of try on your shirt and decide where you'd like that placement to be. And we've decided it's going to be right in here. If you want to shorten your shirt, you can do it at the same time. Um, and at that edge, you simply would trace, in which we have started to do, trace along the cut edge. Now, this is going to have a half inch hem, so please add a little additional length. And then for the back, you mm -hmm. continue just cutting it straight with that side um, of the pattern. 
so that it's straight off in the back and you have the nice shape in the front. It, it, that's a very flattering shape. Right. Good, good design, Donna. Um, then while you have the shirt on, you might want to mark the shoulder. Right, what we're going to do is try to find the center point on our shoulder where we're going to start our princess seam. Now sometimes shirts may have a dropped shoulder. You know, the seam allowance may go longer. So that's why I don't just measure the shoulder. Right, right. And since we're also using like a, a zipper trim here, we also removed a little of our yeah. seam allowance there in the yoke. And what we're going to use is a curved, a slightly curved ruler that they use in fashion for dressmaking. And we're trying to position it so that maybe it's about two inches beyond the point. Sure, whatever looks attractive to right. you. Right, kind of audition it. And then we're going to just trace in a nice chalk line because this will give us a great guide for establishing our trim on the shirt. Now you saw us in an earlier segment place ribbon into place. You could use ribbon, you could use zipper trim as you're going to do, and this is a little bit of a different zipper. Right, and the zipper trim that we have here have the metal teeth, and sometimes they need a little help. They need <laughs> to be removed, so you simply take the gripper and it locks and then you pull to remove a tooth and stand back. <laughs> okay. So just pull it out so that it's included, the tape is included in the seam allowance, not the teeth. Right. And then we simply start to place our trim and position it on our chalk line. And, and you top stitch, just top stitched it down to the shirt. And then after that is in place, after, we'll show you in the back, you're just going to hem the lower edge. Remove that extra zipper teeth in the hem area. The collar was done in the same way that we did the collar earlier, just by using the double-sided tape and positioning the zipper in that area. We have some tape in that section right now, and I'm doing this a little awkwardly, but you get the idea. Right. We'll flip it to the back. And Donna can show you how she remodeled this shirt, upcycled it. And here you've shown another trim idea. Right. I used a, a fusible um, bias tape. And again, I used my fashion ruler to establish the position of my princess seam in the back. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is a portion of the cuff because what we did on the original shirt is cut off portions of the sleeve. Make it like three-quarter length instead right. of a full length. And so now we remove the cuff from the bottom half of the sleeve and that is then trimmed to create our little back tab. So we would be cutting off the button and buttonholes mm -hmm. and trimming both sides. So in, with this type of trim option, you would combine the quick bias trim and the zipper trim on the same one, but with this bias trim, because it is fusible on the underside, there's a little fusible web, you don't have to do a lot of pinning before doing the stitching, which is really convenient. Right, right. And how did you get the measurement here? I kind of eyeballed it from the front. It's kind of the mm -hmm. center point. Um, and you take it more at an angle and again it gives you a really nice shape sure. in the back and another hint is you kind of cut it the back into thirds. Sure. So let's take another look at the finished shirt and you can see the back width and how that's been divided into thirds. The side, the center, and it's very attractive. If you didn't have a yoke you could extend that, that trim all the way to the shoulder and connect the front seam and the back seam. And that's how you get a great upgrade of a frequent flyer shirt. Begin with a once loved tailored shirt and then give it reshaping. Upcycling is easy to do with a few basic creative cutting and trimming techniques. I'm certain there is a shirt in your closet just waiting for this next renovation. We have a shirt that's ready to be cut apart and the result is what you just saw. And Donna, why don't you explain those renovations? Basically, I took a standard um, blouse and I removed the collar. I, I want a kind of a v-neck shape here. So then I trimmed, I trimmed the whole front and I also cut off the sleeves or the cuff of the sleeve. And what happens is you have maybe a little fuller sleeve at the bottom 
And so I kind of did a sleeve trench flap. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. And you have that waistcoat look at the bottom, just right. Like right. Detail. Also, we uh, continued the waistcoat hem on this shirt as well, and then we also did some alterations on the back. Um, this is actually part of the collar that was removed. So we simply, I simply trimmed it, and there were some great darts on the back. So I, I mm -hmm. positioned it at the dart area and top stitched That's it great. on. So one of the first things you do would be to try in the shirt, mark where the waistline is in the back so you would know where to put that back tab. And then again, use the, the waistcoat pattern that comes within the book that accompanies today's program or trace a shape like that that you may have on something at home. And Donna, you've done that on your sample. Right. And so we have it already trimmed. Mm -hmm. And you would repeat on the other side. Sure. And again, straighten it off in the back. I'm going to cover up the next step here, mm -hmm. so we're, we're going to start at the neckline. Don's already cut off the collar. You know, it takes a little bit of courage just to cut. Oh, it sure does. Yeah. It sure does. But so, to, to get the V-neck. We're, we're basically measuring down about five inches from the neck band mm -hmm. and making a mark. And then what we're going to do from that mark is we kind of create, we kind of attach it to the lower band. It then kind of creates a V-neck. and after we've had it all marked. <laughs> yeah, you get out your scissors and you start reshaping. Reshaping. So I'm going to simply cut off the collar band and hold my breath a little bit. Oh, you'll and, do fine. And just aim for my marking. So now I have a nice clean V-neck. Mm -hmm. And it was repeated on the other side as well. You saw on the finished garment that the trim was added and Donna used ribbon, grosgrain ribbon. And we started to have the ribbon on, on the area. It's going, the grosgrain ribbon is going to be attached between the second and the first button and then all the way around to the neck, to the hemline down at the end. So just a little bit of a width. Now this is rather wide ribbon, but it worked well. Right, right. Um, sometimes you just have to purchase what you can find and, and, and use it. And, and, this, and this worked well with the garment, so you meet right sides together and then stitch with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Then after it's all stitched, you give it a really good press and you turn the fabric then to the underside so that it will encase our, our edges of our blouse. And here you can see stitching in the ditch, stitching in the well of the seam between the grosgrain grain ribbon and the shirt to attach the ribbon into place. It's a traditional kind of binding technique, but this time used with ribbon. And later on, we'll take a close-up look of the inside of the finished shirt. But before we do that, let's talk about the sleeve trench. Right. Basically, I trimmed off my sleeve mm -hmm. at about this point and simply put in a hem. And this point is right above the, you the left sleeve that, placket. It, I just like that little triangle design. Yeah, so Donna left that in there. And then because this is rather full, it, you don't right. necessarily want to keep it that full. You use part of the collar band or part of the collar and use that same ribbon trim technique of stitching it to the right side. And what I did was I measured up about two inches from the hem of my sleeve and I made an opening. I opened the seam allowance so that I could insert the raw edges of my trench flap into the seam. And then you would simply stitch it closed and I'll to just, encase. I'll do some virtual sewing here. There okay. we go. And, and again, you'll audition how much you should maybe pin or tuck your fabric, I tucked about an inch mm -hmm. and then aligned this parallel with the hem and then I would put a button here to secure my yeah, I'd like little that. flap, trench flap. If you have collar or a collar band left over, then you flip to the, to the back. You could do the finished hem, I should say. We didn't talk about hemming it, but this blouse had a nice area for uh, with the darts. Right, right. And this was a section that Donna measured between the dart sizes and finished the raw edges attaching the ribbon and then we would stitch in the ditch as I demonstrated a little bit earlier and then just put, put this in position. 
it's it's very simple. These renovations don't take these a long time. You can upcycle a shirt in a very short period of time. Let's take one more look at the collar area just to, so you can see the finished edges. And again, it gave a nice finished edge. And again, the trench flap on the sleeve. And it's, it's a great idea, great finishing technique. So whether you have a shirt that's well loved or one that you just purchased and you'd like to upcycle it, upgrade it, these techniques can be applied with just a few hours of time. Repetitive motion, doing the same actions over and over is part of our craft. Cutting with scissors or a rotary cutter, plus the repetitive motion when hand sewing can cause sewing and quilting enthusiasts to develop carpal tunnel syndrome. I've invited Dr. Jonathan Teeting, Assistant Professor of Hand and Upper Extremity Surgery at UW Hospitals in Madison, Wisconsin to give us insight on the symptoms, prevention, and the very much the correction of carpal tunnel. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy. Thank you so much for having me. You know, if I'd come to your office, Jonathan, and I'd say, I'd probably say Dr. Teeting, but I would say, I'm having difficulty. My hand is going to sleep. I have pain. What would you say to me as a sewing and quilter how to correct this? We'd first talk about how much sewing and quilting that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, we'd look at ways to either modify the length of time, um, give you breaks during periods when you're sewing, mm -hmm. um, or find different ways for you to help hold your um, tools sure. when you're sewing that might give you symptomatic relief. It's pretty common in our industry for those with the, with the craft to have that discomfort. And one of the things that I have done, which corrected it, was kind of a splint. Yeah. Wearing a, wearing a splint, particularly at night, allows mm -hmm. the hand and the wrist to be held in the appropriate posture so that the median nerve, which is the nerve that's responsible for causing carpal tunnel syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, gets the appropriate nutrition and it allows you to be able to do more during the day before you start having symptoms. So splint at night and then I would imagine to take breaks when you're doing repetitive motions, as I mentioned, hand sewing, hand quilting, working with a rotary cutter. Frequent breaks are important, and sometimes even longer breaks. If you sew for a longer period of time, you might mm -hmm. want to take a slightly longer break during the middle of the day before sure. you get back to it. Is there anything as far as massaging or working in that area that is helpful? There are some uh, myofascial release techniques that therapists mm -hmm. use. Um, there are also steroid injections that can sometimes provide relief for mm -hmm. periods of time. Um, and there are also uh, different pads that you can use to help not put quite so much pressure on the wrist uh, and, and injure the median nerve. And then to seek help so that you don't wait till it's too long, too, ab too ab late. Absolutely. The longer you wait, the more damage you can do to the nerve. And sometimes, if you wait too long, you can start having weakness in the hand, which is difficult to make mm -hmm. better. You know, the purpose of working on Sewing with Nancy to have guests like Dr. Teeting is to help us enjoy our craft longer. And being very visual people, I'm really pleased that you were able to bring with, with you this diagram that shows the area of the wrist and hand that are affected by our repetitive motions. Yeah, I just wanted to show that when we're, when we're grabbing tools or uh, bending our wrists repetitively, that the median nerve is the, is the structure that runs right underneath this tight uh, ligament. Mm -hmm. And that's the nerve that gets pinched um, uh, or squeezed in the carpal tunnel, and that's what causes carpal tunnel syndrome. And the recovery time after, if, if, for example, if we had to have, if I had to have surgery on my wrist, which I'm not going to have, but right. the, what's the recovery time? Usually in patients that have mild carpal tunnel syndrome, mm -hmm. I try to treat them with a knife splint like we talked about. And if they get relief from a knife splint, they can, they can hopefully avoid surgery indefinitely. Yes, great. In patients that have slightly more severe symptoms or if I see injury to that motor nerve or the, nerve, mm -hmm. the part of the nerve that controls the muscle, then we talk about surgical treatment. And usually the recovery from surgical treatment takes about six to eight weeks. Sure. And then afterwards, I would imagine, after that six to eight week period, you have them take breaks so that it doesn't occur. Exactly. We have them gradually return to the activities that they love. So if we, the message to sores and quilters out there is to take it a little bit easy when you're doing some repetitive motion. If you start noticing that you're having your hands go numb, mm -hmm. take a break. 
Mm -hmm. um, and try to rest it and talk to either your primary care doctor or a hand specialist about getting a night splint. Thank you for being our guest on Sewing with Nancy. I'm certain that many of our viewers will take your advice and take some breaks now and then. Thank appreciate, you. appreciate it so much. Thanks so much for having me. You're very welcome. You'll find information on this Nancy's Corner guest at nancyzeman.com and you'll find links to the other Nancy's Corner guests. Plus, you'll be able to watch current Sewing with Nancy programs online at your convenience. You'll also be able to read my blog and you'll be directed to all things Sewing with Nancy. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Nancy and Donna have written a fully illustrated book entitled Upcycled Shirts that includes all the information from this two-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2508. Order item number BK2508, Upcycled Shirts, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.